All right, here we are once again to talk about my favorite music of the past year. So uh, let's just get right into it with my top five singles of 2021. Starting off, I've got Contraband from Make Them Suffer featuring Courtney LaPlante from Spirit Box. I knew this collaboration was coming for a while because uh, I saw that Courtney had Buka, the keyboardist from Make Them Suffer, on her podcast. And, uh, you know, they're both great vocalists, and I was expecting these two bands to work together for a while. So. so I was super happy when it finally happened. And the song's amazing. You know, a big chorus that's uh, really catchy and a great, heavy, and beautiful song like Make Them Suffer is known for. At number four, I've got Dead Nest from Monuments. They've been releasing a bunch of singles ever since Andy Sezek joined them for the vocals. I really look forward to the album that they're going to be releasing next year. And this one, I feel, was the strongest of the singles that they released this year. Great groovy riffs and fantastic vocals as usual. At number three, I've got UVB-76, and I don't know why that's the name of the song, but it's by Shrezzers, and it features CJ McMahon from Thy Art Is Murder. Wow. Man, it seems like this band has no trouble innovating. It's just always new styles and great riffs with uh, unique sounds. And it's got that heavy stuff, it's got that poppy vocal, and it's just a, a great genre blend. Plus, CJ does those absolutely monstrous vocals. It just makes the song super energetic. At number two, I've got Full Fathom 5 from Atlantis Chronicles. These guys haven't put out anything in a long time, and the last time they did it was after the departure of their original vocalist, but also they have an album coming out, so I, I look forward to that next year. This was really, really great. They definitely showed off the guy's new vocals with like a, a big a cappella section in the song, and uh, the video for it is pretty cool too, uh, cool artwork. It seems like the band kind of changing its style a little bit, but if anything it's for the better more clean vocals. Uh, some fans might not like that, but I, I find it pretty cool. And finally at number one, I've got Lost in Transaction from the Dolly Thundering concept, and it features Matteo Gelsomino and Raphael Weinroth-Brown. Uh, I hope I pronounced those correctly. Really, really great stuff. Impactful, you know, thought-provoking lyrics. Just fantastic songwriting with great breakdowns, and the guest vocals are, are, are beautiful, and a, a nice break from the, the very gritty, usual stuff that Dolly Thundering delivers. It's super groovy with lots of catchy riffs and hooks. Just lots of little bits sprinkled in here and there. Upon multiple listens, you'll keep noticing cool stuff that the guitarist is doing, tapping, it's all its all very creative. The musicianship in this band is fantastic, and the vocals just tie it all together really well. So this is definitely my favorite single of the year, with a great music video too. Speaking of, let's go on to my favorite music videos of 2021. At number 5, I've got Loco Coco from Project Mishram. This is a weird, weird video that's just a bunch of visual effects. There's like paper cutouts of the band members, and the song is ridiculous. It's about like coffee and stuff, <laughs> and it's just a, a very entertaining song and video from a band that blends genres with the best of them. Great metal. At number four, I've got Long Way Home from 12 Foot Ninja. Now, this video is absolutely ridiculous. It starts off as like a parody of the Wiggles, and then it gets absolutely ridiculous with all these references to Back to the Future. The stuff that 12 Foot Ninja is usually known for. It's super entertaining, and uh, knowing that a, a video game was made later that you could play as one of the characters from the music video uh, just makes it that much cooler. At number three, I've got Dementophobia from Aborted. This one's another really fun one. It's all a, a Scooby-Doo parody. The animation is really nice, and the song is absolutely killer. So it's, it's just a, a very fun video for a very heavy song. You know, these guys running around a castle, dealing with ghosts and stuff. All good fun. At number two, we've got what's basically a movie in a music video, Drone Corpse Aviator from Archspire. This is a sci-fi horror kind of video where all of the musicians and vocalists are hooked up to machines and they're like made to play extremely fast. It's a uh, very gory uh, with great effects and it's, it's just really fun and high production. Uh, there was actually a reaction video put out of the band members' mothers all reacting to the video because it's so intense. It's pretty funny, you should go check it out. But uh, yeah, that, that was definitely a work of art. And for my number one music video, I also have the Dolly Thundering concept. They've been putting out this big concept uh, series of videos and songs that all kind of tied together with this like message of 
modern slavery and how advertising and capitalism is like absolutely everything to us now. The video for God is Dead and Long Live Man, it combines the two songs into one video because they tie together really well. It's really, really interesting. Fantastic music, obviously, but the artwork that makes this video, it's just a, a lot of uh, minor animation with, uh, it's probably all digital illustration, but it's really fascinating and super entertaining. It's also, it's it tells a good story and represents the lyrics and songwriting style of this band very well. And I find myself watching it pretty often. So that's it for my top music videos of 2021. Okay, next up I've got bands I discovered this year. I'm gonna start off with the band Ashen. I found out about them because, unfortunately, one of my favorite bands, Kadinja, their vocalist, is no longer with the band. And they needed a replacement for at least touring. I don't think they're gonna become a permanent member. But the vocalist for Ashen went to replace him, and that's how I found out about Ashen. They're a metalcore, modern metalcore band, much more accessible, but they're also very new. They only have like three singles out and uh, some cool music videos, but I definitely enjoy what they've done already and I'm interested in what they do next. I hope they can stay fresh and not fall into the big pile of metalcore bands that exist today. I hope they can stand out. Next I've got Blue Stali. Now this band I think has been around a while, but it's like electronic rock kind of deal. It's just like a generally heavy sound. A whole lot of synthesized instruments. Uh, stuff that sounds like it could be used in movie soundtracks or video games. It's just very cool. Next I've got Ad Infinitum from Switzerland. Now I just found out about these guys recently and I haven't listened to a whole lot, um, but the couple singles that I did check out I'm very interested in. Fantastic vocals and a solid backing band that's pretty entertaining. It's another great entry into female-fronted metal bands with great wide open sound and bits of orchestral elements as well. Nice full production. I uh, look forward to checking them out more. Lastly, I found out about Monochromatic Black and I found this band because Painted in Exile was a band I really liked and they don't exist anymore, but it seems like all of the ex-members have gone on to other projects and one of them is this Monochromatic Black band and they're actually doing really well. It's great progressive modern death metal, female vocals, and she does really, really good growls as well. It's super heavy, and uh, some of their songs I feel like uh, gets a little crazy, but I, I know I'll wind up enjoying it because I like those kind of progressive elements where you don't exactly know what's coming next. And I look forward to checking them out more. They currently have two full albums out, one of which was released this past year, so check them out. Thankfully this year, uh, there was basically no releases that truly disappointed me, so I'll be skipping that section. Alright, now for my honorable mentions for the top albums of 2021, in no particular order. First I've got The Mix Grape from Buried Alive. Now if you've watched my previous top albums, you know that they make my list basically every major release they have. Uh, this time though, it was definitely more experimental, a lot of hip hop elements and a couple songs that I wasn't too crazy about, some stuff that I wouldn't exactly listen to regularly, uh, but still a fantastic release. Next I've got Dream Theater's A View From The Top Of The World, and this was a very pleasant surprise because it seems they've kind of gone back into a bit of an older style of their songwriting. It seems to be a continuation of their last release, which was actually pretty good as well. More songs on this album that I would actually regularly listen to. And it reminds me of a little bit of their old school stuff. Really enjoyed it. Next I've got Obscura's A Valdiction. This is basically their Cosmogenesis album part two, and that is one of my favorite albums of all time. They've got their uh, old bassist back, which helps a lot with the songwriting and the, the great fretless sound, and uh, it's just a really energizing, fun death metal album that any longtime fan of Obscuros is definitely going to enjoy. Lots of catchy riffs too, like bright stuff uh, within the heaviness, and it's a breath of fresh air in this genre. I really, really liked this album. Next up, I've got Vengeance from 12 Foot Ninja. This is my favorite band. This release was a little concerning. It seems like, uh, you know, they always experiment, but I felt like this time it's really lost a bit of its edge and the stuff that used to hook me before didn't seem to be in this album a whole lot. Their previous album I, I listened to constantly and know the words to all the songs, but this one I've only put like three or four in my playlists other than the singles. And for some reason it just didn't click with me like the old stuff did, and now I'm really disappointed to be hearing that the vocalist is leaving the band, so it's just the two guitarists and drummer as the original members. They have a fill-in bassist while on tour. I don't know what they're gonna come up with next after this. I feel like a big change in style is in store. We'll see what happens, but 12 Foot Ninja, you're still my favorite band. And lastly for the honorable mentions, I have Arch Spire's Bleed the Future. What a great album to follow up Relentless Mutation. 
This stuff is some of the fastest, most creative, technical death metal there is. It's just absolutely fresh, driving the modern metal scene. These guys can't write a bad song. So many classical influences in the midst of such an onslaught of heavy riffs. It's almost exhausting listening to this stuff sometimes. And I've actually been following one of their guitarists, Dean Lamb, on YouTube a lot and watching his live streams, and it's cool to have a lot of insight on what goes on behind the scenes in a band like this. You know that the guys just had a lot of fun creating it. And here goes my top five albums of 2021. At number five, I've got Dysphoria by Termina. This is their debut album. Uh, it's a collaboration between Nick Nocturnal and Andy Sizek, two guys that got really big on YouTube, but they're you know a fa fantastic pair of musicians. Great songwriting skills, catchy riffs, big breakdowns that are just absolutely slamming, and a big wall of sound. It's very good music to get you pumped up with choruses that you want to just sing along with and scream. There's not a bad song on this album. I knew this kind of collaboration would be an absolute hit, and uh, when they started putting out singles, it was just super exciting to see two great minds put together a masterpiece. At number four, I've got Comatose from Ghost Iris. The last album was pretty great. This one was awesome. I cranked the songs over and over. I feel like the songwriting style got a little bit better, not quite so repetitive, and when they needed to emphasize certain parts of the song, it was done in a much better way than uh, on their last album, Apple of Discord. Uh, the catchy stuff is everywhere. After only a couple listens, you can remember the choruses to almost all the songs. It's really great stuff. Also, I feel like the lyrics have gotten improved a bit, along with the guitar tone. I feel like they've kind of found their signature sound now. It rocks. At number three, we have Omega from Epica, a band that seems like they cannot do any wrong in their last, like, five releases. It's so good. Everything they put out is awesome recently. And this is just another great addition with some cool videos and, and massive songs that delivering more and more good stuff with the orchestral elements and great vocals. If you like Epica at all, you're gonna absolutely love this thing. It's just another great addition to their catalog. And every time I hear of a possible new release from them, I get super excited because I know it's just going to be gold. And this was definitely one of my favorite albums of the year. And number two, I've got Eternal Blue from Spirit Box. Boy, was I excited for this because they basically released half the album in singles <laughs> and music videos before it finally came out. So we knew exactly what we were getting as Spirit Box fans. Incredible stuff. It's so unique and they get the perfect balance of heavy and light. They utilize Courtney's vocals perfectly. And I feel like it's a metal band that almost anybody could, you know, find a couple gems in. When it comes to heavy metalcore these days, this band rules all. And at number one, my favorite album of 2021 is Witness from Vola. Man, talk about goosebumps. Every song is just a, a journey. Such unique production that gives a sense of space. Very airy and there's a great balance of heavy and light stuff as usual. And even when they took a huge risk by having a rapper do a guest spot, it was killer. It's my dad's favorite song on the album. I could sing along to this thing all day. Uh, it's been in my rotation non-stop. I can't help but give my utmost appreciation to this kind of artistry, songwriting, musicianship. It's just so unique. Anybody could be a fan of this band. It's beautiful and heavy, and you better go listen to them right now if you uh, haven't checked them out yet. Witness from Vola is my favorite album of 2021. So thanks for watching. I look forward to next year as usual, but I have to say it is getting a little harder to do this because I find myself experiencing too many releases, too much good stuff, honestly, uh, that I can't, I can't quite as easily recommend entire albums as much as individual songs or you know bits here and there from, from certain bands because with streaming services these days and the way uh, you find out about new bands and new songs, album releases don't have quite as much of an emphasis put on them. So things might be changing next year, but we'll see. Thanks for watching.